But then again, we have to take it beyond just taste, right? So that's one aspect of it. But then we do like. All right, debate time. Well, in a, right. there is a queue, but you're more than welcome to. What do you do? What time do you want to do? Well, I mean, I mean, it depends. There is a little queue forming, so it depends. I, I, I'm cutting the queue. Yep. I'm a very important person. I got things to do. People in the troll. How long a debate do you want to have? My, my so, name's Ed. My name's Michael. I'm nice, a Michael. Proud carnivore. There you go. Um, a I'd carnivore like, or an omnivore? Like, uh, omnivore. Sure, omnivore. Sure, sure. I'm here at Yale University, and I have a tablecloth that reads: "If um, eating animal products is a choice, then why do we choose to be cruel?" Um, you yeah. sat down very kindly, and you said you're a proud omnivore. So, I'm a proud omnivore. So tell yeah. me more about the proud, the, the pride of being an omnivore. It's not necessarily that you know I'm hurting animals, mm -hmm. as it is that I'm cooking, and I like when I cook. I like to have a large array of choices. Sure. Um, that includes meat, yeah. and it's not necessarily limited to meat, no. but I do like the choice of um, animal products sure, in my sure. food. So it's, you'd say um, a, 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 an idea of choice, absolutely, is very important, uh, but also like a flavor, you enjoy the taste of it. Yeah. That, so you, it's not, because it's interesting, when we say proud omnivore, my, one of my first questions I was going to say to you is, well, are you therefore proud of what happens to animals? But, We're all animals. But are you, are you proud of what? So when you buy like a piece of steak or, or a chicken breast from KFC or whatever it is, I, and you say, well, I'm a proud omnivore because I enjoy how it tastes, are you, are you also proud of the suffering that's caused by the purchase? Um, am I proud? No. Am I ashamed enough to change my behavior? No, because okay. it's very far removed from me. Yeah, absolutely. So there's degrees of separation. Yeah. Um, so let, let's take, I'm, I want to come back to the taste thing, but I, I'm, let's follow this train of thought, degrees of separation. So. Um, we buy a product in a supermarket or wherever, and the consequence of that is that supermarket has bought it from a slaughterhouse to have killed the animals. So let's say I hire a hitman and I pay a hitman to, to kill someone, the, the hitman kills someone. Am I then morally excused because there's degrees of separation in place? Well, I think we should draw a distinction um, here when we're talking about morality because, yeah. you know, say, say you're Christian, right? You, thou shalt not kill. Yeah. That doesn't include animals. But there's also no asterisk that says it shouldn't include animals. And you also said that humans are animals just a moment ago. Yeah, well, don't kill other men or women. You know, so, it's, it's kind of a stretch if you try and uh, equate, uh, you know, killing another person yeah. with uh, killing a chicken. You know, so what I don't we necessarily mind. You know, killing the chicken. Sure. Well, what we then have to establish is is what is it about non-human animals? Um, what, what trait or characteristic do they possess that makes it worthwhile killing them? Is it just because we enjoy the taste, or, or is there, or is there something more bio? What was the trait in non-human animals that mean, means that we're moral excuse to kill them? It's that they don't have. Um, I, I wouldn't say self-awareness, but they don't have the same level of consciousness as a person. So maybe they don't have like the cognitive abilities, right? The emotional capacities, maybe. Yes. Would we define that as like a form of intelligence? Yes, but I, I don't want to say that humans without those cognitive abilities are right. safe to eat. So, that's so I think I well, not necessarily. I think that you can like put all humans into one bin, and generally the case is true yeah. that. But, but, um, but what we have to do. So if we're differentiating humans from non-human animals, then we have to find a trait in non-human animals that, if applied to humans, would also would not make that justifiable. So if oh, that's a that's, that's a that's why that's, it's that's, tough. that's that's I don't know, man. I don't know if I agree with that because. I think you can find a trait that's generally true in all animals and then you must apply to say is that trait generally the case in all humans because you're always going to find an exception yeah, of course. and you don't necessarily need to apply the rule in the same ways to those exceptions. But if we, if we wanted to create a, a, a distinction between two, two separate groups, there has to be one thing about one group that isolates it from another group that if applied to the other group would still not be valid. All right, so what, what is your response to heightened level of consciousness? Well, the idea of heightened level of consciousness, I, I, I don't know, I, I'm not sure exactly what that means. I think the point is of consciousness, right? So these animals are conscious. And I think when we say heightened, we're, we're referring more to like a, a, an emotional or an intellectual, a cognitive capacity rather than just consciousness. Like to be conscious is to be conscious, but the other add-ons to that are, are what separates us, right? So I, I agree with that. So when you say heightened level of consciousness, what are you referring to specifically? Intelligence, self-awareness. Self -awareness. 
ability to build giant structures like Yale. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I don't see any chicken farms looking like this. Well, I mean, we see massive chicken farms produced by humans. <laughs> so, but the point is that if in t so what we're then saying is if if life is defined to in by intelligence, right? Yes. So that's what we're making the claim of. Then we do have to to be consistent. We have to create hierarchies within our own species to say, well, those of us who who built Yale are worth more, have a higher worth of life than those of us who I couldn't oh, build I, Yale. I think I think we totally are. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes, I leave. <laughs> Seems somewhat. That was yeah. Seems she's somewhat actually over the top, craziest right? thing. She's actually a vegan. <laughs> Is she? Oh, that's yeah. fine then. She's yeah. she's more than welcome. Yeah. Um. Okay. So we have to, to be to be consistent. To use that idea consistently has to be applied to to, to this situation as well. To say, yeah. well, those of us who built Yale, which was not me, would therefore, and probably not yourself, maybe your forefathers, but uh, must therefore have a higher <laughs> worth of life than those of us who couldn't build Yale. Well, they're certainly worth more money. That's <laughs> true. But, there we go. but that's another rabbit hole. Okay, let's go back to taste, okay? And let's say it, it, you say, well, I'm a proud omnivore because I enjoy cooking with these things. I like choice and I like flavor. And nothing's going to, nothing I feel like would make me not be an omnivore. Just because, um, forget, forget the food. If you made the food taste exactly like real chicken, okay. then I would eat it. You know, I think right. it's morally a correct decision here. Yes. But... Currently, the food doesn't taste like that, and it, it's a lot more trouble for me than it's than it's worth, so. especially because, as you said, the degrees of separation. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if everyone else was a vegan, like I'd obviously have lots of vegan choices, and it'd true. be very easy. And that's I'm true. sure in 50 years, the technology will be yeah. excellent. So, that's, that's my my fake chickens will taste like real chickens. So it is just a taste thing, right? And a convenience oh, thing for a, you. A convenience and taste. Well, I, I like that because I think I think that's honest. Um, but then the question becomes, well, in, in the present time, when we can get Beyond Burgers, they're pretty good. The question then becomes, I mean. What has higher value, uh, taste or life? Or, or, or more to the point, can we use sensory pleasure alone to morally justify an action? Uh, yes. <laughs> Based, but, basically, <laughs> but then, if, so if we use sensory pleasure alone to morally justify an action, again, we have to be consistent. And so anything that provides us with sensory pleasure, that could be taste, it could be feeling, it could be sight, must therefore be justifiable. So then dog fighting is justifiable because we enjoy it. Well, um, that, that, We've got oh, to be it's not cat it's not categorical, man. There's, we've got to be consistent. I know, but there's there's weights to every every wrong, and I think the weight to killing a chicken is less than the weight to you know dog fighting. Dog fighting but right? why? Why? Because chickens were raised to um, to, be to be killed. But some dogs are bred to fight. Yeah, but that's like for not necessarily the culinary pleasure. It's of of like a person, which I think a is visual inherent. pleasure. I mean, what's yeah, the difference between that's... taste, pleasure, and visual pleasure in terms of what's moral? Well, I think I think taste and like appreciation of good food is a lot closer to the human soul than watching some other animals hurt themselves. Well, I mean, if, look, historically, we, we've always found pleasure and entertainment in watching gladiators. That was humans, but even just yeah. more like animals fighting animals. That's, Bread that's, and circuses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we've always found pleasure in that. So I would argue that the two are, are probably intrinsically similar in terms of we've done them for a long time. We, they've always provided this pleasure. Bread came before circuses. Bread did, but bread's <laughs> vegan, so that's fine. He is, but well, not yeah. Bread's bread's good, but yeah. so. But I guess, I guess the point is then, you know, we have to, we do have to be somewhat consistent. And so, if if we do just do say taste provides justification, then we have to say, well, anything that provides me sensory pleasure, you know, let's just let's take humans out and just do animals, right? Uh, Non-human animals, then that, that has to be justifiable. So, you know, is eating dogs justifiable because people in Southeast Asia enjoy it? Is eating pilot whales justifiable? Yeah. So, yeah, okay, that's good. Sure. Okay, yeah. so that's good to be logically consistent. But then again, we have to take it beyond just taste. Right, so that's one aspect of it. But then we do like. All right, debate time. Well, All in a, right. there is a queue, but you're more than welcome to. What do you do? What time do you want to do? Well, I mean, I mean, it depends. There is a little queue forming, so it depends. I, I, I'm cutting the queue. Yep. I'm a very important person. I got things to do. People in the troll. How long a debate do you want to have? Um, well, I mean, it depends on. I think well, I, mean, I think I'm. I think I'm just. I think I'm just finishing. I up. think we're wrapping up, um, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. We'll just talk for a little. I mean, sure. I think I think this was a really productive Thank discussion for agree. the two of us. Um, I really enjoyed, I enjoyed it. hearing your side. You're not going to debate you. me. Uh, Thank you so Are you much. serious? You're tapping out before we even have a discussion. Excuse me, sir. No, I'm. Vegetarian is like horrendous. I'm going to debate you. Vegetarian is the worst thing. I'm going to debate you. I'm okay, going to debate you. Debate. I'm, I'm going to debate, debate you. But you, but you have to sit down. Okay. Hang on. Ah. Oh, but I mean, have you seen this guy? He's, you know, he seems pretty. Uh, oh man. Um, so, are you are you happy to wait ten more minutes? Thank you. I appreciate it, guys, and I'm really sorry about this. This is very uncharacteristic. I have no okay. patience. Understand. When I want something to happen, it happens. Okay, well, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen because right. these guys have been waiting very patiently and I appreciate their patience, which I think is a virtue. Um, okay, so, um, are we ready? 
Uh, firstly, my name's Ed. What's your name? Uh, Smitty. S Spitty. Smitty. Smitty. Okay. Yes. So Smitty, I'm here at Yale University and I have a tablecloth that reads, if eating animal products is a choice, then why choose to be cruel? Um, so what, what is your thoughts on, on that statement? Why don't you just like raise cattle ethically and then like kill them ethically and like eat delicious meat that like makes your body feel good. Okay, well you, you've got to describe that. So describe the process of raising killing animals ethically. And also, actually before that, define the word ethical. What does the word ethical mean? You like make them use, live good lives, like they, they graze, no, objectively, they fuck each other, they have their children. Objectively, what does the word ethical mean? Not inflicting suffering on like creatures that are innocent. Okay, so, okay, so with that in mind, so then let's continue. So how do we then kill an animal ethically? You like raise it well, then when it's time to die, you do that thing in No Country for Old Men, and you shoot the cattle prod in his head, then it dies painlessly, then you, then you like prepare it cleanly, then you eat like, if you're like on a farm, you eat like delicious meat for like six months. Okay, but we said without suffering, and so the animals suffer when we do these things to them. Why would it suffer? It lives a great life. It fucks the other, it fucks the cows. But you're not thinking about this logically because the reason we farm the way we do is not because we're cruel, it's because it's the only way to do it that's economic or environmentally viable. So the way you're proposing wouldn't work with the situation you're asking for. Maybe we should just like commit genocide, like kill all the people so that way like it's not so, it's, that way like, like eliminate the cattle farms. Because there's a lot of, there's not, there's not many shitty cows, but there's a lot of shitty people. So maybe we should be like ethnically, not ethnically cleanse, but just like cleanse out the shitty people. So you said that there's not many shitty cows, which, so would you say that cows are innocent? Yes. Okay, and then you said that the word ethical was not to harm in animals that are innocent. So cows are innocent, which means we can't kill them ethically. So why isn't it ethical to like raise them really well? And then when it's time to like kill them, you just take the cattle thing, yeah, shoot it in their head when they're not looking, and they instantly die. And then you have delicious food that's very healthy. Because it's not a necessity. So in the absence of necessity, to take the life of an animal would be an act of cruelty because they don't need to die, nor do they want to die. And if they live in a good life, it's almost crueler because they value their life and they find happiness in their existence. And so if they live a good life, to take that from them is, is almost arguably crueler because they value their life more than those who are raised badly. They don't live a good life if they're like in, if they're in nature, they don't live a good life because they get yeah. instantly killed by wolves. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, well, unfortunately, we've hunted wolves to the point of extinction, so that, that isn't true in today's world, but that doesn't, that, that's beside the point. Just because in nature horrible things happen doesn't mean that you and I are justified to do horrible things. I guess, but we, they live fine lives. We've, like, oh, bitchified, we've bitchified the bison animal into this cow. So, like, why don't we just raise it well, then, like, when it's time to kill it, we kill it, and we have delicious food that makes us feel good. Because, because that's an act of immorality, because these animals- Why is it immoral? Because it's unnecessary. And you, you, you go back to taste. So what is high value? Oh, no, no, let's not say that. Um, do we require more than sensory pleasure to morally justify an action? No, you can be vegetarian, but you shouldn't, because it's healthier to eat red meat. I'm talking about being vegan, and actually, when we, actually, it's not healthier to eat red meat. It's been it's been proven time and time again that actually red meat is, is bad for us. It's high in saturated fats, cholesterols, trans fats. It, it's actually a, a class. I think it's considered a class two carcinogen, meaning it can cause colon cancer. What is it about red meat that makes it healthy? People who it's not that people who eat red meat eat, live like a much worse a much unhealthier existence. So they eat like the blooming onion at the Outback Steakhouse, and like the cheesecake at the Outback Steakhouse, but, but you'd and say the that big potato at the Outback Steakhouse, you, and like the Big Mac. But you could take that out of the equation. That, does, that doesn't change objectively whether or not something is, is, is good or bad. But okay, so does sensory pleasure morally justify an action? No. Okay, so then taste itself does not justify what we do to animals. It plays a role. But it doesn't justify it. No. Okay, so then what justification do we have if it's not taste? And it's not necessity? Because we are designed to eat red meat. There should be no dairy. There should not be dairy. Well, that's good. I, well, dairy we agree on that. Dairy cause the cow to suffer. Yeah. And vegetarians eat dairy. They like I'm eat vegan. exclusively dairy. I'm vegan. Okay, but like soy is terrible for you. Soy, beans, and nuts are terrible for you. Why is soy? Why, why is soy? Your intestinal system is horrible. And why would, <laughs> and based on what reasoning? Why is soy terrible for you? Because it messes up with your stomach. It makes you feel why? Horrible. Why though? Why? It's like a rotten food. But why? You've got. But if you're going to make claims, you have to tell me why that's the case. It's a legume, and legumes are unhealthy. But why? I don't know because okay, you don't know. A personal experience plus like Pers anecdotal evidence is not a, I don't know. does not provide I've, I've grounding. I've studied before. I can't cite them because I'm not like a loser who like studies <laughs> stuff. But like, I'm pretty sure that like. And from personal experience, when I ate that stuff, I was all messed up, and it doesn't make me feel good. Sure. Okay. Okay. Look, so I think we can all agree, right? That you know, you and I are probably not going to throw you know citations and studies at each other. 
but we have to look at kind of what, what a generic uh, scientific consensus would, 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 ma would mandate. And by mandate, I just mean... I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this debate to me because I crush you, but I'm going to give you like a last word because I like to wrap up my videos like on, a, on an even now. So we're going to go to seven minutes. So we're, we're going to wrap this video up now? You got 55 seconds. Why, why are we wrapping this video up now? I'm happy to go longer. I'm bored. You're bored? Oh, oh, really? But yeah. you were so excited. What? You were so excited to sit down and debate me. Yeah, but like I won the debate. How did you how did you win the debate? We, we proved that taste doesn't justify something, that animals are innocent by your own logic and therefore we can't ethically kill them, that just because we raise them in a good way doesn't justify taking their life from them, that the way you propose... No, I said that, that, the, that, that No, that the way you propose is not environmentally or economically sustainable and the reason we do what we do to animals is we not because to, like, we're cruel. We wipe out the US population of shitty humans and then, no, we'll, we, then we'll have funny cattle to eat. No, then we, we just, we can just go vegan and then we don't have to, we don't have to kill animals uh, or, or humans, humans being animals as well. Last word, you have 15 seconds. Um, uh, being vegan is better for the environment, it is better for your health, and also it's better for the animals. What we do to animals is unnecessary, and therefore, what no, I would not. say is that sensory pleasure it's does great. not justify it. Thank you for your time, and uh, you. do you have a t-shirt? What? <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta run That's nice, alright, okay. Have a nice day.